So thank you all for coming. Um, this is um, an initiative that uh, Kim and Mike Fortune and Alice and Kenner and myself have been um, excited about as far as the possibility of creating conversation around uh, some of the work that has emerged from uh, the editorial intern program with the Journal for Cultural Anthropology. And one of these initiatives are, is this uh, public advisory board session. Um, and the, our conversation uh, last year after the Triple A's um, was in terms of a performance that Kim was quite excited about having and staging. And we hopefully will have that um, shortly. Um, we've invited an artist to join us. Um, but they are running away from caught in traffic. So um, we're going to begin without them. Uh, so the rationale behind these uh, public advisory board sessions is, um, is, is to look at the ways in which uh, the journal, um, both as a, a source of a conversation, um, but also as a source of um, emerging uh, modes of inquiry, theoretically, empirically, and methodolo methodologically, um, around particular thematics. And so we're focused here on gender and sexuality. Um, and what I'm just going to sort of lay out what I've been doing with the, uh, with the journal as an editorial intern to sort of set up the ways in which this um, conversation uh, I'd like to see it sort of unfold today. And then the roundtable discussion afterwards um, will pick up on hopefully some of these questions that I'm going to pose now. So as an editorial intern, um, if, I, if you're not familiar with the website, um, uh, what we've been doing is um, creating sort of thematic lists, oh, okay, thematic lists. Um, and one of the thematic lists that I've worked on is the gender and sexuality list. Um, and if you go to the home, oops, excuse me. Um, if you go to the journal's homepage and you just uh, browse through to themes, you'll find this gender and sexuality list, which has been subsectioned into these sublists um, because there's actually a huge number of essays that treat either tangentially or directly uh, topics related to gender and sexuality. So I've basically broken them down into these uh, sublists and gendering structures, feminisms, intimacies, kinship, masculinities, queries, and reproduction. Um, and in terms of these lists, uh, in terms of the general list, um, these are all sort of clumped together, but then you have this option of sort of tagging and keywording each of um, those sub-lists, and you'll be taken to uh, the respective list. In addition to these lists and sub-lists, there are um, supplementary pages. Um, and so I'm going to share with you one of these supplementary pages that is related to an <coughs> individual essay. It's frozen. Um, so this is one that was uh, produced by Alison Kenner. And uh, if you look at this list, there's this promotional material related to the essay itself, um, imagery, as well as links from the essay, the um, video, multimedia links, as well as um, <coughs> questions for a classroom discussion. So the idea, the idea would be that these, these uh, essays could be used uh, as pedagogical tool, tools. Um, and then as far as the life of the website, there's this, each of those essays is connected to a discussion forum. Um, and this is one of the spaces in which we'd like to sort of see a reverberative loop of conversation um, around the themes and the topics that each of the essays uh, sort of treat. So, um, if you go to these discussion pages, um, which are sort of empty at the moment, um, so this is one of our questions, is how do we animate these spaces? Um, and so going to the discussion forum, you can also link back up into some, another initiative that we've had, which is a virtual issue that treats um, a specific theme or topic, um, and is five, of the, five essays from the journal are made available to a readership um, for, uh, is it 60 days? Um, and so uh, this is circulated to Wiley Blackwell's thematic list as well as the, the Society for Cultural Anthropology's um, membership list. Um, and then as well as to, uh, I think you said something like 400, how many international partners? 600 international partners. Um, and so it 
so these are the types of initiatives that have been organized in order to create greater discussion and sort of think about the ways in which the journal can sort of lead uh, discussions around gender and sexuality, as well as um, the ways in which the, uh, the journal might uh, start to suggest or call for types of work uh, around emergent forms of, of practice, socialities, um, kinships, feminisms, etc. Um, so with that as sort of a background for today's conversation, I have asked each of our panelists or respondents to um, think, sort of reflect about the, the, the rich archive of material available with the journal, that the journal has produced, as well as to sort of um, come at that uh, reflection from their specific uh, disciplinary background. So um, I'm going to introduce the panelists, um, and then uh, they each have about five or seven minutes, five to seven minutes to speak, um, and then hopefully we'll have this artist who's going to intervene and who is not showing up. <laughs> Sorry about that uh, traffic. So this is just an alphabetical order, and um, uh, so our first uh, panelist respondent is Ed Allison. Um, who researches the ways in which desire seeps into, reconforms, or reimagines socioeconomic relations in various contexts in post for Japan. Her first book, Night Work, Sexuality, Pleasure, and Corporate Masculinity in a Tokyo Hostess Club, is a study of the Japanese corporate practice of entertaining white-collar male workers in the sexualized atmosphere of hostess clubs. Her second book, Permitted and Prohibited Desires, Mothers, Comics, and Censorship in Japan, examines the intersection of motherhood, productivity, and mass-produced fantasies in contemporary Japan through essays on lunchboxes, comics, censorship, and stories of mother son incest. Um, in addition to a more recent work, uh, Dr. Ellison is also a future co-editor of the journal Cultural Anthropology. Our second respondent is Pardis Mahdavi, who is currently at Kamona College as Assistant Professor of Anthropology. Um, and she is uh, where she re uh, she received her doctorate at Columbia University in the departments of sociomedical sciences and anthropology. Um, her research interests include sexuality, human rights, youth culture, transnational feminism, and public health in the context of changing global and political structures. She is currently an editor for Culture, Health, and Sexuality, as well as for Harvard Quarterly, a journal devoted to contemporary social issues in Iran among, and amongst the Iranian dis diaspora. Her book, Passionate Uprisings. Iran's Sexual Revolution has recently been published with Stanford University Press. Also joining us is Professor Jeff Redding, who teaches Civil Procedure, Civil Procedure and Comparative Law at St. Louis University School of Law. Prior to joining the SLU Law Faculty, Professor Redding was an Oscar M. Rubhausen Fellow in Law at Yale Law School. Prior to his time at Yale, he held research positions at Harvard Law School in the Islamic Legal Studies Program and Columbia Law School in the Center for the Study of Law and Culture. He's also worked with various law-related organizations in Pakistan, India, and Egypt. Professor Redding earned his JD from the University of Chicago Law School. His areas of interest are comparative law and religion, comparative secularism, legal pluralism, and family law. Um, and then our artists who should be coming um, at some point during the session, though weather and traffic will determine this, um, is a hook suspension artist who will be talking about his small community of performance um, in New York City uh, and the types of intimacies and kinship that concern them. Um, this, their, their community is called Dis Disgraceland Family. Um, and uh, in the case that they don't come, I might take this computer and actually show you some video and um, just in, as a supplement. Um, but I think what I'd like to do is sort of first ask our, our respondents to sort of um, share with us what they've been thinking about uh, the journal, the list, the initiatives um, that concern us in sort of animating this reverberative loop that I've suggested. Um, and so I, I would like this to be really informal. It's a round table discussion. Should so we like, yeah, we could even round up. Like we could circle up. If it's going to be a round table, let's, yeah, let's circle up. Other than doing presentations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 